Hey everyone, I'm Brianna Sarpy, and I'm very excited to talk to you about A Thief Among the Trees, a standalone original graphic novel set in the world of an Ember in the Ashes novel series. It takes place years before the events in An Ember in the Ashes and follows three young military recruits, Elias, Helene, and Tavi, during their brutal training for the Martial Empire. I'm happy to be joined by the creators of the series, Saba Tahir, Nicole Andelfinger, and Sonia Liao. All right, so let's just jump into it. Saba, when did you decide that you wanted to make a prequel to the series, and did you always know what the prequel would be about? Um, I didn't always know what it would be about, but I have um, a pretty good sense of the character's whole history, so basically from birth to death. And um, so this was one episode that I had thought about um, before, and I had thought about potentially including it as a memory in, in Ember, but then that didn't end up happening. Um, so when Boom, you know, and I started talking about doing the graphic novel, initially we were talking about an adaptation. And Ember is such a big book um, with so much going on that I was like, well, how would you guys feel about instead of doing an adaptation, kind of doing a prequel so that it can um, it can kind of contribute to that world, but be its own complete story because I didn't want to, I didn't want to have to do, um, you know, a graphic novel that was divided up into multiple parts just to tell the story of Ember. Um, and they were really excited about it. And so um, I thought of the story that I had had that was sort of a seminal moment for Elias and, and the person he ends up being in Ember. And I felt like it was a good fit. It, you know, I read it and it was beautiful and it just like, I'm so excited for people to read it. Um, Nicole, what aspects of Elias or Helene were you most excited to develop in the OGN? Oh, uh, absolutely. The type, the person that they are and the seeds planted that show where they're going towards and how they become these amazing and complicated and complex characters by the time we hit Ember. And of course, you know, Ember's only the beginning. There's two, two three more books after that. And oh gosh, <laughs> it's just, this sets so much of the stage for this is how the world influences people. And then also influences how these people make choices in order for them to live. So it's just, that's what I was most excited about. That's really great. I mean, the, the characters are just, are so rich. And, um, you know, Sonia, what was the process like working with Saba and Nicole to bring the characters of the novel to life in the graphic novel? What was that process like? Um, it was fun and challenging since you're working with established characters, you know. Yeah, I, I don't want to draw someone that doesn't look kind of like what they had in their mind. So, it was difficult at first, but they gave a lot of good character descriptions. So working back and forth, we were able to establish how everyone was, was like before we actually got into the meat of the story. Um, so that was nice. That's great. It's great that you had, um, you know, some, some work to pull from as well that already existed. So you had sort of, you know, a roadmap to work with. That's really awesome. Um, Saba. What inspired you to create the friendships and the dynamic between Elias, Tavi, and Helene? I think that when, um, you know, you're at any sort of school, you're in any sort of school setting, right, your friends become um, your whole world. And I think that um, that was definitely true for me. Like, I had my family and, you know, they were cool, but my friends were kind of everything, especially at the age of 14. Um, and, um, that's even more so the case with these um, children because they don't really get to go home very much. They're essentially at a, a boarding school. I mean, it's a very violent boarding school, but um, that's basically where what, what they're at. They get a month of leave every year and they go home and that's, that's pretty much it. Um, so their bond is very close because they're not just friends and they're not just classmates, they're family to each other. And um, I wanted to explore that dynamic of, of you know, what do you do when you basically see people as family, but you're pitted against each other by the people who are supposed to be taking care of you? Yeah, that was, seeing that conflict was really interesting and really powerful. And I, I really enjoyed seeing that internal struggle in there. Um, Nicole, 
uh, how did you and Saba work together to turn Saba's novel into a graphic novel? What was that like? Well, Saba provided an absolutely amazing outline. And I remember when I first saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I hope I do this justice because this right here is already amazing. Um, but helping to, I always see my role as kind of helping. It's helping bring Saba's amazing ideas and putting them in a format this graphic novel format and just helping refine the story to adapt to the medium that it's going to. So it was very much um, working out, hey, this is what I think would work. And then Sabo would give notes and they were all always such on point, uh, just notes that helped make the story, her story even better. So it was, it's honestly, it was a joy. I loved working with her, loved seeing what Sonia made from what we turned in because honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like half the work for a graphic novel always seems to fall onto the artist uh, interpreting the stuff that we put on pages and just, oh man, just seeing what she did with it, it still blows my mind and I've seen well, it. <laughs> that's awesome. And Nicole, you're leading me into my next question for me beautifully. Thank you so much because Sonia, my next question is, when you were drawing the book, what were you most inspired by and what emotions were you trying to convey in the pages? Oh, uh, wow. So inspiration wise, I mean, my style, I grew up reading manga, but you know, in the last few years, I've been reading more Marvel DC stuff, more indie stuff, just trying to get a feel of like, like different pacing and ways to convey emotions because I feel like manga tends to be a little more like ocean heavy while there's more action and stuff so combining those two is what really inspired my style um the actual books that I was inspired by like nowadays the lot of like those it's a really good balance between like adventure but also like deep characters so um books like Amulet, Five Worlds and then in the indie circuit Rice Boy are I think really capture that sense of you're establishing a world that's new to the reader, but you're also grounding it in a character that's relatable. Um, that, you know, so you're not just tossing them into the deep end and, you know, pushing way too many new things on them at once. You're taking the time to almost introduce the characters, like, intro, sorry, introduce the world through the characters. So, you know, that's kind of what I was thinking of when I was trying to <laughs> bring the script to life. Um, as for the emotion, that's actually, so the emotions, you know, there's a lot of like really introspective scenes in the comic. So, um, I feel like Tavi was actually the easiest one. Cause I feel like mo morally he's pretty, like he's pretty steady, consistent. Like he has a strong moral compass and he doesn't want to back down. Um, while Helene's the opposite where like, she's very, not, well, not opposite, but she's very much just like, this is how things are, you know, um, don't go against the system. So for Elias, he was the most difficult character to get the emotions right. Um, since, you know, he's experiencing a lot of conflicting emotions through the book, knowing what's going on is wrong, but also understanding that he can't really do anything about it. That like, even if they, you know, do what Tavi wants, that it's ultimately not going to affect that much. So. It took a couple redraws to get that right, to get that, that conflict right. And in the end, you know, I draw it, I send it out, and I'm actually glad to have, um, you know, the Boom team, Saba, Nicole, to like look it over to make sure that it's coming across correctly. Since, you know, I might think it's right, but, but maybe readers won't. So in the end, um, he was the most difficult to get the emotions right, but I think I'm pretty glad with how it came out. You know, that's so wonderful. You all did such a, a fantastic job bringing this gorgeous book together. Like the story's beautiful. The pages are beautiful. Thank you all so much for your time. And everybody be sure to pick up A Thief Among the Trees in stores now.